Hey, pre-calculus. So these are your 8.1b notes for polar coordinates. Um, in our first example, we're asked to convert from rectangular coordinate, or sorry, convert two rectangular coordinates from polar. So if I were to graph the coordinates I I'm given right now, I would go out to the fourth circle. So I'm going to go four out, and I'm going to do the direction four pi over three. Now four pi over three is past pi because pi is three pi over three and I'm going to go a full pi over 3 past it. So I would go around until I got to 4 pi over 3. There's my direction. And then I'm going to go 4 units out. So this guy is 4. I'm just going to estimate what that would look like. Now I want to find my x and my y coordinates. So what I really want to know is how far did I go back and how far did I go down. To do this, uh, you can use the formula. So the formula for converting is r cosine of theta, r sine of theta. If you do that, your r is your radius, so 4 cosine of 4 pi over 3, 4 sine of 4 pi over 3. And from there, you could think about your unit circle. On your unit circle at 4 pi over 3, let's see. If I think about how far I've gone back and how far I've gone down, I've gone down more. I've gone back a half and down root 3 over 2. And from there, that would mean 4 cosine. Oh, sorry, cosine's gone. Cosine of 4 pi over 3 is negative a half, so 4 times negative a half. And 4 times negative root 3 over 2 for the sine. 4 times negative a half is negative 2. And then the 4 and the 2 here reduce, and I get negative 2 root 3. So that's one way to do it. Here I've gone back 2, and I've gone down 2 root 3 for the sides of my triangle. Okay. Uh, another way to think about it is if you look at this triangle, this has clearly got to be 60 degrees. And I say that because from the triangle, it's obvious that I went back less and down more. And so then you could know that since this is 60, that your sides would be root 3 over 2 and a half. But that would be root 3 over 2 and a half if it was on the unit circle where the radius is 1. And since the radius is 4, you can just times by 4. And that'll get you the same answers as we just got because we're scaling the triangle up by 4, basically. All right, for the second example, we're looking at converting from rectangular to polar. So this is my x and this is my y. One way you can do this is you can start by drawing your triangle. So let's see, I've gone forward 2 and down 2. So over 2, down 2. And if you take the time to draw your pictures accurately, it'll help you kind of figure out what the answer should be. So notice that I have 2 and 2 here. This obviously has to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this has to be 45 degrees. And I can use Pythagorean's theorem, four, or sorry, 2 squared plus negative 2 squared equals c squared. So 4 plus 4 gives me 8. And then if I square root both sides, let's see, root 8 can be broken down into root 4 times root 2. So I would get 2 root 2 is equal to c. There's my hypotenuse. And from here, I can move to polar coordinates. My radius, or my hypotenuse, is 2 root 2. And then my angle is a negative 45 or a positive 315 degrees. Um, for this unit, though, I want you guys to give your answer in radians. And so I know 45 degrees is the same thing as pi over 4. So I would say negative pi over 4 for my direction that I'm going to travel instead of saying 45. You could also say 2 root 2. And then let's see, this would be a positive... Um, well, I know 2 pi is the same thing as 8 pi over 4. So if I'm 1 less than that, I would be a positive 7 pi over 4. Notice, though, that at no point, I, I haven't used my calculator. I haven't looked at an outside unit circle. These things are coming just from figuring it out and from what I know about the unit circle, and that's what I want you guys to start doing. Start doing it without, like, actually looking at a physical unit circle or using your calculator. All right, some new types of problems that we haven't seen yet in class, we will see tomorrow. 
Um, if you're converting to polar and you have something like x squared equals 4y, we're going to use the fact that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So we can use this information. So instead of x squared, I'm going to write r cosine theta, and this whole thing is going to get squared. And instead of y, I'm going to say r sine theta. So this is coming in for the y, and this is coming in for the x. And then I can square the r and square the cosine. So r squared cosine squared theta equals 4r sine theta. And then the trick on these, um, what you're supposed to do is to get r by itself. So I'm going to put a little asterisk right here. Solve for r. Now let's see, you can start solving for r, trying to get r by itself, first by, we have an r squared here and an r, so I can divide both sides by r. And that'll just give me a plain r on that, cosine squared theta equals 4 sine theta. And then if I want to get r alone, I could divide both sides by cosine squared. And so I would have r equals 4 sine theta over cosine squared theta, and that would be a perfectly fine answer. You could also say, going one step farther, that r equals 4 sine over cosine would give us a tangent theta, and then we would still have one cosine on the bottom left, and so that would make it a secant theta, because we could break this up as 4 sine theta over cosine theta, and then 1 over cosine theta. And really, either of these two answers is fine with me. You could say 4 sine over cosine squared, or you could say 4 tangent secant. Either one is fine. Um, one last example is how to convert, and I guess this is sort of cheating with calling it an example 4 because I've got 3 here, but converting to rectangular. So now I have an equation in polar, and I want to go to rectangular. So again, we're going to use the fact that um, x equals r cosine theta y equals r sine theta, and also the Pythagorean identity, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So here, I have r equals 5 secant. Well, secant is 1 over cosine, so this is 5 over cosine theta. And then if I multiply both sides by cosine theta, the cosines cancel, and I get r cosine theta equals 5. But if you notice, r cosine theta is equal to x, and so I can sub in x here, and I get x equals 5, which is my answer. As soon as you get rid of the r's and the thetas, then you're in rectangular form. Um, so similarly here, I have r equals 2 sine theta. Now, to be able to sub it out, I have to be able to like something in here. And so um, I need to try and like puzzle out or think of a way that I can get rid of the r and get rid of the sine theta. Um, one trick, this is just totally a trick that works, is I see that I have r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So if somehow I could get a squared in here, I would be sitting pretty. Um, I don't want to square this side though because I don't have anything for sine squared to get out. So instead, what I could do, this is sort of sneaky, is multiply both sides by r. If I do that, I get r squared equals 2r sine theta. And then r squared, I could sub out for x squared plus y squared. And then this r sine theta, I can sub out for y. And now I have an equation in rectangular coordinates. Now, as an aside, this equation, if you wanted to graph it, you would have to be able to like either get y by itself or figure it out, which is kind of annoying, like because it's some sort of circle. So what you could do is say x squared plus y squared. I'm going to take away 2y from both sides. And now I'm going to complete the square. I know this is going back old school, but when I complete the square, I take half of the middle number, so negative 2 divided by 2, and I get negative 1. And then I square that thing. So half of the middle number squared gives me 1. And what I would do is I would add a 1 here and a 1 here to keep the sides balanced. And then y squared minus 2y plus 1 factors as y minus 1 times y minus 1, which is the same thing as y minus 1 squared. And then I have a 1 here. 
Now the neat thing about this is this is a circle. The radius of this circle is one and the center of this circle is over zero because there's nothing here and then up one because of the opposite of negative one. Okay. So this would be a circle with center over zero, up one, and it would have a radius of one. So it would look like this. The graph would look like that. And then for part C, last but not least, if I have r equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta, again, I'm looking for a way that I can sub things in or sub things out. I'm trying to basically like get rid of things. So you look at this and you're just trying to see things like you're trying to see r sine theta or r cosine. I see a little cosine there. So once again, I'm going to use that trick of multiplying by r. So if I multiply both sides by r, I get r squared here equals 2r plus 2r cosine theta. And now I can use the trick again here where I get x squared plus y squared because it's equal r squared. And I can use the trick here that r cosine theta is x. So I have 2r plus 2x. But I still have this stupid r squared, or this r right here. And so... <laughs> This is sort of silly, but you take the 2x away, you get x squared plus y squared minus 2x equals 2r. And then from here, since this is our x's and y's now, it's fine to square both sides. So I could say square both sides. This I'm just going to leave alone. I don't want to deal with it right now. It's just kind of ugly. And on this side, I would get 4r squared. And then as soon as I do that, now I can sub this guy out. This is really just a game of substitution. You're really just trying to get rid of the r's and the thetas any way you can. And you know, this isn't pretty, but now it only has x's and y's in it, so it's something that our graphing calculator would be able to deal with on some level. Um, we're not gonna try and make it pretty, we'll just leave it like that for right now. All right, that's it for notes tonight, guys. Um, go ahead and make sure you get the notes down and do the practice problems, and I will see you in class tomorrow. Thanks.